Next on our roadmap is looking at ratio analysis. Now, there are many, many ratios, and there are many more not even included in our textbook and some of my favorite ratios, sales per employee, R&D is percent of sales are two of my favorites, not even mentioned in our book. But these are generally pretty easy. If you look for patterns, look for mnemonics. So we will look for those mnemonics or memory devices to help us know these ratios rather than memorize them. So we'll see if we can do some memory tricks on some of these, and I'll point out which of these ratios are key and which ones are important and which ones I should memorize for life. These ratios really are determined from the financial statements, most of the time from the income statement and the balance sheet, and are are categorized in five key categories, as I mentioned earlier. Short-term solvency, long-term solvency, asset management, profitability, and market value ratios. Let's take a look at some of these really important ratios. Short-term solvency ratios look at liquidity. They provide information on how liquid a company is. Is Apple liquid? Well, I think so. If you look at their balance sheet, they have uh, something on the order of 200 plus billion with a B dollars in cash and short-term investments. And so you will see that, and those can be turned quickly into cash. So you can say that Apple is very, very liquid, given that fact. These ratios are important to short-term creditors, the companies reflecting the company's ability to pay bills over the short term. One of the most popular and heavily used is current ratio under short-term solvency, simply current assets divided by current liabilities, both from the balance sheet. Generally, the higher, the better. You don't want to get that too high, especially if you're carrying lots of inventory and there are high inventory carrying costs. They have to be reasonable. In my personal life, I like to have a two-to-one current ratio. I don't really have a lot of inventory in my life, so no inventory holding costs in that matter, but uh, I like to have lots of current assets available to pay my current bills or current liability. Quick ratio is the same as the current ratio. I'm just subtracting inventory because inventory is not very liquid. And in a company with little inventory, the quick ratio and the current ratio will be about the same value. In a company with lots of inventory, we'll be subtracting a larger number in the numerator, and we will see significant variance between the current ratio and the quick ratio, both very important. Quick ratio, very important if your company has lots of inventory. We know inventory uh, going up is a use of cash, so we want to uh, be very careful with it. Cash ratio measures our ability to cover our current liabilities just out of cash. Cash we get off the balance sheet, and current liabilities we get off the balance sheet and just simply divide them. Working capital to total assets, we remember that. Working capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities in the numerator from the balance sheet. And total assets also come from the balance sheet. Interval measure. How long can I operate before going out of business? I take my cash, divide by my average daily operating cost. Cash comes from the balance sheet. And average daily operating costs come from the income statement. I would take total operating costs and divide by 365 days to get that average daily operating cost value. And this is kind of a survival ratio. So um, be wary if uh, you're tasked to look up this ratio. I've never had to calculate this ratio in my entire working career, thank goodness. Uh, That means the companies I was working for were solid, not in danger of going out of business. Long-term solvency ratios look at long-term obligations such as debt. Or leverage. If you see the word financial leverage, we're talking about debt. Simple four-letter word, debt. How heavily indebted is this company? Can we pay back our debt in the long term? A company like Apple, do they have any debt even? When they have $215 billion of cash and marketable securities, why do they need debt? We'll see that by examining the Apple financial statements. Several ratios in this category, total debt ratio, is total debt divided by total assets. It's the debt to assets ratio. As another way we could put that, debt to assets ratio. Debt to equity is just total debt over total equity. And equity multipliers one plus that debt to equity ratio is the easy way to remember that. If for some reason I can never remember assets to equity, I just simply calculate assets is debt plus equity over equity and I get one plus debt to equity. First ratio is also called debt to assets. I wish they would have called it debt to assets, but they didn't. 
Um, they call it the total debt ratio. TO means divide by in mathematics. So debt to equity would just be debt divided by equity. Very important ratio. And equity multiplier, we know it's equal to one plus debt to equity. And uh, here is the proof. So here's how you prove the equity multiplier. Equity multipliers, one plus debt to equity. Well, let's prove that. We said it was also equal to assets to equity. Is equity over equity plus debt over equity, or one plus debt to equity. So that's the proof that from getting from assets to equity to one plus debt to equity. Again, I my way of remembering it is one plus debt to equity. For me, that's easier for some reason than trying to remember assets to equity. If they would have just called it the assets to equity equation, I'd be okay. But since they called it this obscure thing called the equity multiplier, I remember it by taking one plus debt to equity. Another long-term solvency ratio is long-term debt to total capitalization. I've never used this ratio uh, in my entire working career. That doesn't mean you won't. It's total long-term debt over long-term debt plus total equity or total capitalization. And the more common ratio in use in corporate America is long-term debt to equity. And what's a good, quote unquote, long-term debt to equity ratio? Well, Harold Janine tells us that in his years at ITT Sheraton, which was a conglomerate, he found that 0.33 times worked for him. If he kept his long-term debt to equity ratio at 0.33 times or one third, he could always easily call up his friends on Wall Street and get debt, more debt uh, issued, more equity issued, without any really substantial reviews because they knew he was managing his long-term debt to equity very carefully. Uh, times interest earned is earnings before interest and taxes. EBIT from the income statement divided by interest expense from the income statement. How many times does my EBIT cover my interest expense? Both are found on the income statement. Cash coverage is EBIT over interest expense. How much cash do I have available to meet my interest expense obligations? Measure of available cash flow. And now for some asset management ratios. These are measures of turnover generally or asset utilization ratios. Very, very important. Inventory turnover is one of the most important. How fast do I turn my inventory into sales? Uh, it is cost of goods sold over inventory. Cost of goods sold off the income statement, inventory off the balance sheet. How effectively am I managing my inventory? The faster I turn it over, the faster I turn it into sales. A sales and inventory is just taking that inventory turnover ratio and dividing that into 365 days. And this is the average number of days an inventory sits on the shelf before it's sold. For instance, for an Apple iPhone, it's a very, very low number of days sitting on the shelf, which managers love. We love to turn those iPhones over and turn them into sales very quickly. Receivables turnover, another very important ratio. Take my sales from the income statement, divide by account receivable on the balance sheet. And I can, from that, I can divide that into 365 days to calculate my Day sales outstanding, sometimes known as day sales and receivables, some also known as average collection period. How long does it take me to collect my money from my customers? A lot of CFOs I've worked with like to keep that at 30 days or below because we like to have our money coming in before we have to pay our people. One of the uh, top bills at the top of the stack for the chief financial officer is payroll, and he or she has to make sure they have enough cash in the bank to be able to pay those payroll numbers. And one way you do that is man by managing your day sales outstanding. And if anything gets beyond 30 days, time to call the customer and get them to pay up. Now, there's a bunch of turnover ratios under asset management. Anything turnover is simply sales over anything. So networking capital turnover, sales over networking cap, sales from the income statement, and networking capital or current assets minus current liabilities off the balance sheet. How fast can we turn networking capital into sales? These are turnover ratios. Here's another turnover ratio, sales over net fixed assets. So we know that's the net fixed asset turnover ratio. 
sales from the income statement, the fixed assets from the balance sheet. And we can also have a total asset turnover ratio, sales over total asset, or sometimes called TATO. Sales from the income statement, total assets from the balance sheet. And this is also, we'll see in chapter four, this is also one or the inverse of the capital intensity ratio, inverse or reciprocal, one over capital intensity ratio. That means the capital intensity ratio must be assets over sales. How many dollars of assets does it take to generate a dollar of sales? We'll see that again in chapter four. Profitability ratios, there are three primary ones. The easy way to remember these are 24 karat mnemonic is net return on anything. Net return on anything is net income over anything. Net income comes from the income statement. Anything comes from various sources. The only exception to this rule is inventory turnover, which is cost of goods sold divided by inventory. But the other three profitability ratios are net return on anything. Net return on sales, net return on assets, net return on equity. So the first one will be net income over sales. The second one will be net income over assets. And the third one will be net income over equity, net return on anything. The net return on sales equation is also known as profit margin. I prefer net return on sales for obvious reasons. It's easy to, easier to remember by taking net income over sales. High profit margins are desirable. Net return on assets, simply net income over assets. Net income off the income statement, assets off the balance sheet. How much net income am I getting per dollar of assets? And then net income over equity, how much net income am I getting in my company per dollar of equity? These are return on. Profitability ratio are easy to remember. Market value ratios are a little bit more difficult. Some of these don't come from the income statement or the balance sheet, but they come from elsewhere. Publicly traded uh, companies generally, but anytime, even if the stock is traded internally, you can calculate some of these ratios. P to E ratio, TO means divided by in mathematics. So price to earnings ratio means price per share divided by earnings per share. Price per share, we can get off Google or any major investment house, see what the stock is currently trading for, even WSJ.com. Earnings per share, is net income divided by share. which So net income comes from the income statement and shares come directly from the balance sheet. Very important ratio in, in the financial world. Market to book ratio, how are we doing health-wise in our company? Are we increasing the historic cost of the company, the book value? So on this ratio, I simply take market value per share or price per share of stock divided by book value per share, book value being equity, Total equity divided by shares outstanding. And again, the, the higher our market to book ratio is, the better our, we have been for performing in our company. Enterprise value to EBITDA ratio is kind of a newer ratio in the financial world. Enterprise value is an estimate of the market value of the, of the company's operating assets, excluding cash. So you'll take things like market cap plus a debt plus preferred stock minus cash and then divide that by EBITDA off the income statement, earnings per interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Revenue ratio uh, used heavily in acquisition analysis. So you may use that one also and know how to calculate it. 